All right, today we're tackling a momentum problem in which we have a 200 gram bouncy ball that's dropped from a height of 1.8 meters onto flat ground. And upon striking the ground, the ball is gonna rebound with 80% of the speed it had before hitting the ground. Now, given the ball's in contact with the ground for 0.05 seconds, we're gonna calculate the average force between the ball and the ground when that collision occurs. Now, the solution to this problem is made up of three phases. First, we're going to solve for the landing velocity of the ball, that is how fast it's traveling when it strikes the ground. Then we're going to solve for the rebound velocity of the ball. And then having solved for both of those velocities, we're going to be able to solve for the average force of the ball as it strikes the ground. So starting with the velocity of the ball when it strikes the ground, this ball is just in free fall from a height of 1.8 meters. And we're trying to solve for how fast it's going to be going when it hits the ground down here. Now, whether you choose to solve this part of the problem using energy or kinematics, it really doesn't matter. What we're going to come up with is the velocity of the ball when it strikes the ground is 5.94 meters per second, and that's downward. Now, the direction is going to be important later on, and I'll explain why when we get there. Now, once this ball strikes the ground traveling 5.94 meters per second downward, it's going to rebound back up at 80% of its initial velocity. So solving for the rebound velocity, I'm just going to call that V prime because it's the velocity after this collision. We're going to say that rebound velocity is equal to 80% or 0.8 of the velocity when the ball, when it landed, that was 5.94 meters per second. Leaving us with a velocity of the ball just after it strikes the ground of 4.75 meters per second. Now there's an issue here that's responsible for the mistake that people typically make in this problem. You see, if we say the ball is moving downward at 5.94 meters per second, and then later it's moving at 4.75 meters per second, we've missed out on one of the most important ideas separating velocity from speed, and that is that direction matters. You see, this ball didn't just slow down some, it actually hit the ground and bounced back in the opposite direction. And the way we're going to account for that change in direction is by saying that up is the positive direction. If we say that up is the positive direction, really what that means is this velocity of the ball just before it hit the ground was negative. A lot of times I see people leave out that negative and they get this problem wrong. But now that we know our initial and our final velocities when this collision occurs right here, we can turn to Newton's second law in order to solve for the average force. You see, you typically see the second law written as the sum of all forces on an object is equal to its mass times acceleration. But Newton wrote the sum of all forces. It was really responsible for a change in momentum over a change in time. Or we can express an average net force as being a change in momentum over a change in time. Now remember, a change can be shown as a final minus an initial value. So what we're looking at is our average net force is equal to our final momentum minus our initial, that's our change in momentum, divided by the time that this collision takes. Now our initial and final momentum can be calculated using the equation P is equal to MV, or linear momentum is mass times velocity. So plugging in the numbers given to us in this problem and what we've calculated, we can say that our average force is equal to 0.2. And you gotta be careful there because 0.2 is the mass of the ball. I know it was given to us in grams over here, but remember, you have to deal with everything in kilograms. So we're going to have 0.2 times 4.75, that's our final velocity, minus 0.2 times negative 5.94. Remember, that negative existed because the ball was initially moving downward, not upward. Now we're going to divide that change in momentum by 0.05, leaving us with this. The average net force on the ball is 42.8 newtons. And this leads me to the third mistake that people typically make in this problem, which sometimes is an issue and other times isn't. And that is that they forget about gravity. You see, we're trying to solve for the force between the ground and the ball when this collision occurs. But when the ball strikes the ground, the ground isn't the only force acting on the ball. There's in fact two forces acting on the ball. There's the ground pushing upward and gravity pulling downward. And we have to account for both of those. So truly this 42.8 newtons, or the net force on the ball, is the result of the upward force by the ground 
minus the force by gravity. So plugging in that the force by gravity is 0.2, that's the ball's mass, times 9.8, we can solve for the actual average force between the ball and the ground, which works out to be 44.7 newtons. So this is how you solve for the average force between a ball and a ground in a collision like this. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.